This is the first video in the series of videos about Access 2013 Unit A, in which we're going to be getting started with Access 2013. In this series of videos, we should be able to complete the following objectives. First of all, we should be able to understand the relational database. Then, explore a database, create a database, create a table, create primary keys, relate two tables, enter data, and edit data. This video is primarily going to be focusing on understanding rel relational databases. Now, Microsoft Access 2013 is a relational database software that runs on the Windows operating system. Now, you use relational database software to manage data that is organized into lists, such as information about customers, products, vendors, employees, projects, or sales. Many small companies track customers, inventory, and sales information in a spreadsheet program such as Microsoft Excel. Although Excel offers some list management features and is more commonly used than Access, Access provides many more tools and advantages for managing data. Now the advantages are mainly due to the relational nature of the list that Access manages. So when we're looking at a relational database and when we're talking about relationships, we're talking about how is information similar. So what information in one list of information is similar to information that's uh, in another list? Could it be maybe a customer name? Could it be a customer number? Could it be you know an item number that they ordered? You know how is it tied together? And that's what really Access provides us tools for. And of course, it does allow those uh, those tools allow us to sort, group, and analyze and report our data in several different ways and in many ways that Excel would never allow you to do. So what are some advantages of using Access for database management? Well, of course, one thing that we can take a look at is that duplicate data is minimized uh, on there. Now, of course, um, with Access, you don't constantly have to re-enter information, maybe such as a customer's name or address uh, on there every time. Uh, that you have to make an entry because a lot of times the list can be linked or related to another list uh, in the relational database software so that maybe you can utilize something like maybe a customer number uh, on there so maybe if I know that John Doe is customer number 12 uh, I can just type in customer number 12 and all of his information will be tied into that record that I'm inputting in uh, on there so I don't have to constantly keep on feeding in the same information. And really that makes sure that the information is more accurate, reliable, and consistent because I don't have to duplicate that data on there. Because the relational nature of data is stored in an access database allows us to minimize duplicate data entry, which creates more accurate, reliable, and consistent information. Let's say for an example, uh, you have customer data in a customer table that is entered only once and not every time a customer make a, makes a purchase. And usually most businesses will do this. They'll assign you an account number or something like that and they will use your account number to uh, get all your information together. And so they might uh, look up your account number and then they feed in all the information through maybe utilizing that account number that's on there. That way so you don't have to re-input in the name, the address, phone numbers, because all that could easily be mistyped if you had to re-input it in again. Now, of course, data entry is faster and easier if we use something called an access form. Now, of course, data entry forms, which is a screen layout, makes data entry faster, easier, and more accurate than entering data into a spreadsheet. Uh, if you've worked with Excel before, you know that there's the rows and the columns, but however, it's not as easy as maybe filling out a form to sign up for, you know, maybe something like a Facebook account or a Twitter account. You know, those are relatively simple because you see, oh, well, first name goes here, last name goes here, email goes here. Uh, you know, a form is much easier and actually access allows us to create forms so we can input in that data faster. Now, information can be viewed and sorted in many different ways using queries, uh, forms and reports. 
uh, on there as well. Now in Access, you can save queries, which is whenever we're talking about queries, we're talking about questions about the data uh, that's on there. Uh, so we can ask questions about our data and we can save the results uh, on there. Uh, we can have data entry forms, which allows us to input in that information quickly. And also we can generate reports, which allows us to use them over and over without performing extra work to recreate a particular view of the data. Now, unlike in Excel, you have to modify your data to make it look a certain way, and then you have to then recreate it if you want it to look another way. Another advantage of using Access is that information is more secure using Access passwords and security features. Now, Access databases can be encrypted and password protected so that uh, unauthorized users cannot get in and view this data. And also another uh, benefit is that several users can share and edit information at the same time. Now, unlike spreadsheets or word processing documents, more than one person can enter, update, and analyze data in an Access database at the same time. Uh, quick little story, uh, when I was in college one time I had a class that actually allowed us to use a network to where we could actually cheat legally <laughs> in the class. However, we were using a spreadsheet or a uh, word document, pro uh, word processing document uh, that's on there and all of us had the same file opened up all the time but when we would say we overwritten what everybody else was doing and we all thought we were all doing the same thing and that we'd all get the same grade. However, didn't work out to our advantage. Had we been using Access in this case, uh, it would all have been updated real time, and we wouldn't have had to go through there and take a look and be like, oh my goodness, you know, he put down answer uh, seven was B, and uh, I had C, and I thought everybody else had C. So that kind of helps to keep that uh, data accurate, consistent, because it can be shared and edited by several users simultaneously. Uh, the last thing we're going to take a look at in this video on here is the Access versus Excel um, chart that's on here. Now this chart is on page Access 3 uh, where we compare Excel with Access. Now first of all with the layout. Uh, Excel uh, is a natural tabular layout where it has rows and columns in which we have cells. And that does provide for some easy da uh, data entry. Access also has this as well. So when you first open it up and take a look at it, it's going to look very similar to it. However, you have the ability to create forms uh, on there and which makes data entry a whole lot easier. Uh, and of course, we're going to be learning on how to use forms in a later unit. Storage. Uh, with storage, with Excel, uh, you're really restricted to the file's limitation. There's only a certain number of cells that you actually can contain. However, with Access, uh, the storage is virtually unlimited uh, when you couple it with the ability to, to, to use things such as Microsoft SQL Server to store data. So with Excel, as big as the file can get, that is its limitation. But with Access, as long as you set it up correctly, it has a virtually unlimited amount of data that it can hold. Uh, with linked tables, uh, in Excel, of course, you can manage single list of information and you can't time together. So I might have one spreadsheet here and another spreadsheet here and I can't time together. But in Access, I can have two different what we call tables together and I can relate those two things together to reduce down how much data I have to re-put in or the redundancy of data and uh, things I have to create in the relational database. Uh, as far as reporting goes in Excel, there's very limited reporting. You can use charts and graphs and those type of things. Uh, but in Access, there is uh, an unlimited number of reports that you can use and create. So you can, you know, whatever you want, to, information you want to have, you can make a report for it. With security, uh, Excel does have a limited uh, file security options where you can mark it as, mark it as read only so that people can only read it. Uh, or you can actually protect a certain range of cells where people can't change it. Uh, however, you know, the rest of the uh, spreadsheet can be changed. With Access, uh, if you use it with an SQL server, uh, that provides extensive security down to the user and data level, which means that you can encrypt it, you can put passwords on it, and only the people that needs to see certain areas will be able to see that. Uh, so maybe, you know, with Excel, if you give somebody the rights to read it, they can read everything in the spreadsheet. 
with access you can say you can only look at this this and this and that provides a little bit more security for you with Excel multiple users are not allowed because you know they can look at the same file but generally when the second person opens it up it's going to open it up as read only and only the first person can make changes as we mentioned before, access allows multiple users to simultaneously enter and update data and then of course finally on there Excel with data entry provides limited data entry screen so pretty much what you have on there you can uh, input it in directly into the cells you can put it into the formula bar uh, or you can uh, use uh, some of the different um, windows that it provides but it's very limited with access you can actually create an unlimited number of data entry forms for each thing that you're wanting to use so you're not limited to just one basic format that's on there well, that concludes the information that's on page access two and three, which is understanding relational databases. In the next video, you're going to have to go to Core Sites and uh, prepare to download your file, which we'll be taking a look at in the next video.